Hey guys, I'm Avish. This is the seventh video of .NET MIUI with Sync Fusion Control series. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get started. In the last sessions, we have focused on the editors category of controls and we discussed autocomplete, data form, and other data entry controls such as masked entry, signature pad, switch, checkbox, and other controls. It is very important to know about these controls before proceeding further. Hence, I recommend all of you to review the previous sessions before proceeding. In this sessions and in the upcoming sessions, we will focus on layout category controls. List view is one of the layout controls and is an essential component that is present in almost all mobile applications. A list view usually refers to a user interface element that displays a scrollable list of items vertically on a mobile device. This UI element is commonly used to show various types of content such as products, messages, contacts, news articles, or any other kind of data that can be organized in a list format. List view is widely used across different applications. Let's look at some examples of the list view below. E-commerce apps like Amazon or eBay use list views to show product listings. Each item includes the product name, price, and rating. Users can tap on a product to view its detail and to make a purchase. A messaging app like WhatsApp or messenger uses a list view to display the conversations. Each item represents a conversation with sender name, the last message, and a timestamp. Tapping on a conversation item opens a chat screen for that contact. Apps like Todos or Microsoft Todo uses list views to display tasks. Each item represents a task with a checkbox, task name, due date, and priority level. User can check off tasks, mark them as important, and set due dates. Social media apps such as Instagram or Twitter use list views to display posts in a user's feed. Each item shows the post content, the user who has posted it, comments, likes, and other engagement options. Music apps like Spotify or Apple Music use list views to present playlists. Each item in the list represents a playlist with its title cover art, and a summary of included songs. Tapping on a playlist plays its songs. Contact apps on mobile devices shows a list of contacts. Each contact item displays the person's name, profile image, and a quick option to call or message them. Tapping on a contact provides more detailed information. Not only these, but some other apps like Gmail or Apple Mail uses list views to show emails in the inbox. Each item typically displays the sender, subject, a snippet of the email body, and the timestamp. Users can tap on an email to read its full content. News apps like Flipboard or Google News uses list views to present a list of new articles. Each item includes the article's title, image, brief description, and publication date. Tapping on an article opens it for reading. These examples illustrate the diverse range of applications where list views are used in mobile apps to efficiently present and interact with various types of content. Hence, it is very important for us to understand and implement list views. The Sync Fusion list view is one of their components designed to help developers create interactive and feature-rich list views in their mobile applications. The Sync Fusion list view offers various features and capabilities beyond the basic functionalities of a standard list view. Some of its key features include data binding. The list view can be easily bound to various data sources such as lists or collections to display dynamic content. Developers can define custom templates for list items, allowing for highly customizable and visually appearing layouts. The list view supports the grouping of items, allowing users to organize and navigate content more efficiently. Users can sort and filter the list of items based on a specific criteria. The list view supports swipe gestures on list items, enabling actions like deleting, archiving, or marking items as done. Lazy loading can be implemented where additional items are loaded as the user scrolls down. Users can refresh the list content by pulling down the list and releasing it. Multiple selection modes are available 
allowing users to select one or multiple items. Items in the list can be reordered through drag and drop interactions. I hope now you understand how important it is for a developer to develop applications using list view. Let's now switch the code and see how we can easily implement the list view using model view and view model also known as MVVM pattern. I'll take a deep dive on MVVM pattern in the later sessions. For now let's focus on integrating the sync fusions list view control into the MAUI application. Let's quickly switch to the code and get going. Let's imagine that we are developing an application for online shopping. The first step in every e-commerce application is to have categories of products and that can be achieved using Sync Fusions MAUI list view. Let's first add the package. Right click, manage you get packages. Let me type syncfusion.list view. Look at that. I have the 22.2.5 already installed for my other packages. So I'll choose that version of package. Feel free to choose the version which you want or which you have installed on your local machine. So I'll just install this one. The package is successfully installed. Let's now right click here and add a XAML file. Add new item. .MAUI and let me add a .MAUI content page and name this one as product category. Before we segregate the code to MVVM pattern, I would like to add all the related class files to the same code base or the code behind file of this product category .xaml file the way we have added it in the previous sessions. Later once we are done with the list view, I will segregate the code and show you how we can achieve the MVVM here. Let me switch to the code behind here. Let me create a class called list category info and create the properties for the category. The common properties would be category name details and an image related to that category. So let me create a class property. Let me make it as public class tab creates a class list category info. Let me create the property use a snippet and say string category name. Similarly string category description category image. Let me now create another class called category repository and create enumerable or observable collections to get all the categories for our e-commerce application. The common categories would be fashion, appliances, mobiles, books, electronics, furniture, home and kitchen, luggage, toys, watches, etc. which you normally notice on Amazon or eBay. Ideally this class would connect to an API and get the collection of categories and for now we will mock the sample data to show the list view. So let me start the class public class name it as category repository then let me add a constructor repository constructor let me add an internal observable collection which holds the list category info and instead of a property let's make it as a method get categories all right now when we are returning it we will return variable list category info is new observable collection and let's return it quickly here so that it doesn't throw any error now let me create a sample mock data here by declaring it as an array of categories as i mentioned category is equal to new and let me create another object which returns the collection say that as new category name equal to let's call it down and say fashion I already have the description here. Description equal to let me copy it from my other machine and say category image. Let me put it blank for now. Now, in a lot of the sessions or in the examples, I've seen that we need to add the images under resources and images folder, but that will increase the size of the application. I would rather use the CDN rather than putting it in the images folder. So let's park the discussion of CDN for a moment. And we'll come back to this category image again. So now we have the category image description. We add a comma here. Everything looks good. Now let's say we will loop this categories which are ideally coming from a API data and we'll add it to the list category info. To make it faster, I have created the rest of the categories and added a simple for loop that populates the data to the observable collection and returns the collection. Notice that from line number 79 to 89, I've created a for loop to populate the category info and in line number 90, we are returning the populated category info through this observable collection. The list view always binds the observable collection and hence we are doing it. So in the first step, we have created the list category info 
second step we are populating the repository assuming that we are getting the data from an api which is over here which is categories and then we are creating the data into a loop populating the category info and returning that now the third step is to create a layout view model which we can use and bind it in the xaml file so let's do that now Let's now the, create the class called public class linear layout view model. This will be our view model class which will be binded in the front end of the XAML file. So let me create a private or let me do like this private void generate source. This method will initialize a category repository, name it as repository equal to new category repository. And let's create observable collection here called property observable collection and which will bind the list category info object and let's call it as list category details and we have the category repository we will call the get what did we name that as get list categories so we'll use get list categories and initialize to list category details equal to dot get list categories that's it let's also create a constructor to initialize this generate source method so what i will do here is i'll create a constructor called public linear layout view model constructor and in this constructor we will call the generate source method that's it we are done with three class files right now let's bind this linear layout model in the xaml file and then we'll do the rest of the coding in the xaml let me flip to the XAML file now. Let's now remove this vertical stack layout and start with content page dot content layout. Let's start with a grid view. Let me add the grid view here. To make it quick, let me add the row definitions from my other window. Let me create this row definition. Now let's create a list view over here. How do I add the list view? Let me go to the menu item extensions, choose sync fusion, go to .NET MAUI, launch toolbox, and then drag and drop the list view here. Now let's add grid row item size properties. Let me change this uh, namespace from list to list view. Let me also change this for convenience. I'll tell you why I'm doing it in later stages. And let's forget about the item source for now and add the rest of the properties like scroll bar let me search for that scroll bar visibility should be always and let me add another property called selection mode for now we are not selecting any item so i'll keep the selection mode to none we will talk about the selection mode later in the next session but for now we'll keep it very simple that we are not selecting any item but we are iterating through the items item source let me bind it later. Let me define the other properties under the list view. The intention is to bind the product category info that we have defined in the C file and the mock data that we have added. So let's start with an item template. So I would say list view of SF list view and you get the dot here and we need to use as item template. So now we have an item template. Under that, we need to use the data underneath. So let's create a data template so that it iterates to the data rows. Now for now, let me create uh, another definition for grid columns. I'll explain you later why I'm creating. A pretty simple thing is we are creating the column definitions with height um, uh, for the row definitions and column definitions to make the height with a minimum width of 94 and other stuff. And we need to add the category images. Remember, I mentioned that we need to add the category images dynamically how do we do that with CDN or the content delivery in networks I'll explain you in a moment before that let's create the XAML UI elements to render the this view item so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another grid with a box view and I'll create a frame to hold the images let me add a frame that holds the image let me quickly copy and paste that I've already done I've added this frame with the horizontal option center clip to bounce equal to true and with a width request within the frame I have added the image which will be the category image let me add the rest of the labels as well create another grid after this frame and I add some definitions and let me create the labels underneath how do we do that we can create the labels binding to category name and category description remember which we have done earlier in the backend file which is a C sharp file. I have also added a box view so that we get a box for each of the items with a light gray background color. 
for the grid row 1 and with other options over here. Now let's go back and do the binding for this item source. Now how do you do the binding? Before doing any binding, we have to define the namespace over here. We can use XML namespace of I would say local which we followed in our earlier sessions and let me take the namespace as CLR hyphen namespace which is nothing for but our sync fusion MAUI app which is a namespace across the application. Once this is done we have to create the binding context before even we bind the item source here. So how do we do that? Content page dot binding context is nothing but our local colon linear layout view model. Remember we created the linear layout model earlier. Now once this is done the item source is ready and we can bind the item source. How do we do that? We will say binding of list category details. That's it. Now let me go to tools, go to Android, Android device manager. Let's start the device which is my pixel 5 on my local machine. Once the device is ready, change this from Windows machine to Android emulator and choose pixel 5 and run the application. Look at that, the application is up and running with default scroll view and we have the category name here, category description and a frame box and a separator. Now we have a frame box over here but we have not binded the image. I want to bind the image from the content delivery network so that it looks very elegant. Let's focus on how to create the image in the content delivery network and add the image source over here so that the list view looks aesthetically good. There are two issues that I ran into for this session. Number one, how do I get the images? And number two, where do I store them and retrieve them and bind it to this list view? Most developers like myself struggle with choosing images because they are expensive. To address this issue, there are many free photos available in the market. I used freepic.com as my library for this session to collect some of the free photos before posting the photographs to your own content delivery networks. You may now ask me a question about what are content delivery networks. A content delivery network is a group of geographically distributed servers that speed up the delivery of web content. To make it simple, we store the images and videos in this CDN and retrieve them for faster performance. The benefits of this approach are we don't have to add the images to the mobile applications resource file and we can modify the images whenever we want without rebuilding the entire mobile application. And image kit was my option for a free content distribution network and free pick was my option to choose the free images. I have downloaded all my required images from free pick.com and then I have uploaded those pictures into the image kit.io dashboard into the media library. Now the advantage of this is the moment I upload the images I get a content image URL so I can copy the URL and map it to the respective categories. Let's copy these URLs and bind them to the product category details. Let's copy this URL and add it in the code behind. Switch to the c -sharp file and I have already added the category images for all of these categories that we have added them earlier as mock data. Now we need to switch back to the XAML and add the image over here. So let me add the image tag. Let me add the image component over here and bind it to the category image. That's it. Let's rerun the application and see the output. Let me choose the product categories here. Look at that. We now have the category images for each and every category that have used with the content delivery networks and this list view is looking pretty elegant right now. I believe you now have a clear understanding of the sync fusion list view integration. We will talk about further list view features in the subsequent sessions. Once again thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.